Hello world, Liu here, and this is part 10 of the Python from 0 to 1 series. So today, we'll be talking about the absolute basics of writing functions in Python. So as a start, a function is a reusable block of code that we can use again and again in our code. So let's jump right into writing a simple function. So the very first thing that we need to note is we use the DEF keyword, which stands for define. And after the DEF keyword, we write our function name. So let's say we want to write a function that finds the average of two numbers. So I'm just going to name my function average. So here, I can name my function whatever I want, as long as it's a valid Python variable name. So after my function name, which is average, I have a pair of brackets. And in between these brackets, I put my input parameters. So here, we can make our function take in any number of input parameters. But since we want our function to find the average of two numbers, let's pass in two numbers here. So number one and number two. So here, once again, our average function will take in two things, number one and number two. And after our close bracket, we must have a colon. And after our colon, we move on to the next line. And here, we begin writing our function body. So to find the average, we first need to find the sum of number 1 and number 2. So let's call this total. is equals to number 1 plus number 2. So here, notice that I indent my line by 4 spaces. So this means that whatever I write here belongs to the function and is part of the function body. So let's say if I print 1, 2, 3 here. Print 1 to 3 is not part of the function body because it's not indented by one level here. However, if we have one indentation here and we print 4, 5, 6, this is also not part of the function body because we have already closed the function over here. So note that whatever you want to type inside the function body has to be indented by one level like this. So next, we use the return keyword. So whatever happens on the right side of return is actually the output of the function. So here we have the sum of number 1 and number 2. But since we want to find the average, we have to divide this total by 2. So we return total divide by 2. And whatever happens on the right side of the return statement is the output of the function. So one thing to note about functions is that nothing happens after the return statement. So let's say if I print 1, 2, 3 here, this line will never run because it is after the return statement, which means that there's no point in writing this line. So let's delete it. So at this point, we have finished writing our average function and let's try to run it. So after we run it, we realize nothing will happen. And that is because we define a function for us to use, but we haven't used it yet. So in order to make our function do something, we have to first call it. So let's try to find the average of 4 and 5. So let's create a variable first. And here, we are going to call our function. So to call the function, we need the function name, average. So let's put average here. And after the function name, we need to have an open and close bracket. And in between this open and close bracket, we need to ensure that the parameters are correct. So here, our function is defined to take in number one and number two. So when we call our function, we know that our function must take in two numbers. So let's say I put in four and five. So with this average bracket four comma five bracket, we have called our function successfully. And whatever that is returned by the function will be stored in the variable x. So if we print x, and let's run this again, we will get 4.5, which is the correct average value between 4 and 5. So here, let's change this to 7. So now if I run this again, I'm going to get 5.5, which is the correct average value between 4 and 7. So one good thing about functions is that we can call it multiple times. So here, y is equals to average of, let's say, 100 and 120. And let's print y. And if we run this, we'll get 5.5 and 110.0. Similarly, we can call this another time too. But now let's just print the average directly. So let's say 100 and 0. 
So if we run this, we'll get 5.5, 110.0, and 50.0. So here, this function takes in two arguments, but we can also write functions that take in 0, 1, 3, and so on arguments. So let's get rid of all this and let's write a couple of different functions. So let's say I just want a function to print apple and do nothing else. Print apple twice. So here in my brackets, I put nothing, which signify that a function shouldn't take in anything. And here, I print apple twice. And next, I'm going to call my function. So print apple twice. And to call my function, I need to have the open and close brackets. And inside my open and close brackets, I put nothing because in my function definition, there's nothing here. And if I run this, I'm simply going to print apple twice. And if I call this function, let's say two more times, I'm going to print apple six times. So this function takes in zero arguments. So next, let's write a function that takes in one argument. So add 10 to x. So here, add 10 is our function name, and our function will simply take in a number and add 10 to it. So here, we put a number as x in our open and close bracket, and in our return statement, we simply return x plus 10. Takes in one argument. And similarly, let's say x is equals to add 10, let's say add 10 to 3. And if we print x, we will get 13. So here, we put only 3 into the open and close brackets when calling our function because we define our function to take in only one argument. So next, let's write an average function that takes in 3 arguments. So here we define average and let's take in a, b and c. So here, note that a, b and c are simply variable names for the scope of the function. So here I'm going to return a plus b plus c divide by 3. So in this case, our function takes in 3 arguments, a, b, and c. And inside the function body, we will add a, b, and c together and divide by 3 to get the average of a, b, and c. So when we call this function, so let's say x is equals to average of 4, 5, and 6. And if we print x, we will simply get 5.0. So here, note that we have 4, 5, 6 here because in our function definition, we define our function to take in 3 numbers. Also, you might have noticed that I used the average name here again. So this function will actually override this function if it has the exact same name. So thanks for watching and hopefully this was clear and easy to understand. See you in the next one.